Hey everyone, Alex here with the Sewing Workshop and I am alive in Santa Fe with our Sewing Workshop team. We have Betsy here, we have Kathy, we have Samantha, and of course we have Linda with 28 amazing students here in Santa Fe. We have pre-recorded our live stream for you today and what's great about that is that we are going to show you the jackets that we are featuring in our Santa Fe class. We are introducing to you the Fractured Jacket class which is on sale today on our website, as well as lots of things you guys can use, fabrics and patterns that we're using to make fractured jackets, as well as some of our favorite pants fabric. So take a look at this pre-recorded session where you're gonna see a trunk show of different fractured jackets that we have and different techniques that we use for the jackets. So take a look, and then we're gonna talk to you about the sale that's here this week. We are gonna do a little trunk show based on our fractured jacket class. And we are in Santa Fe, New Mexico at the La Fonda Hotel. And we have two beautiful women here making fractured jackets. And we're just getting started. So everybody, um, all right. First of all, how, are, how many of you watched the video, or maybe I should say how many did not? You know, everybody got a chance to walk. No, watched watch, yes. You watched it? It was wonderful. Okay. So, there are basically, according to the video, which we have on an iPad, if anybody needs to refer to anything, we can certainly bring it up again. But uh, we each recorded a separate section. Now I have to say, this whole fracture concept came from Kathy Davis, who, honestly, about five years ago, probably, started making these layered, hand-sewn, machine-stitched, uh, multi fabric layer jackets. <clears throat> and she became possessed, as she sometimes does when the project occurs. And so, most, uh, I would say a good half of the jackets that are on the rack uh, were made by Kathy, and the other half by Samantha. And then Samantha became possessed. Well, she became possessed. possessed. Uh, She's more driven than I am. We started uh, by doing a class called Fracture in France. And actually, Nancy Kane was there, and Nancy Shriver was there. Wanda no, Betty. Nancy was not able to go. Remember, she came to the first fracture. Well, that's true. We had a fractured and ja jacket class in Topeka, and yes. Kathy Aiken came, and Samantha. Yes, Nancy. but then we went to France, and Kathy was supposed to go, was unable to go, and so Samantha filled in for. <clears throat> Kathy, and then that's when you became possessed. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, we divided the techniques into three techniques, all of which can be done singly on a jacket or in combination. So I guess I'll start since I think I started the video, maybe. Um, so the first technique is applique. And basically that is a, a layer of fabric that is a base fabric that makes a complete jacket. And then there are pieces of fabric, either torn or cut in any shape that you like, that are placed on top of the base fabric and then stitched in some manner. So the very first one was this one. So here, somebody want to hold that. So this is the... Um, London shirt, and we've made it into a jacket. So the base fabric was a linen, is a linen, that looked a little bit like tie-dye. And then the second layer, the top layer of fabric, is a crinkled linen, some of which we have some other crinkled linens on the table here for purchase. And each square was, um, is sewn down by machine. And then Kathy did some running stitches in well, what is it? White embroidery floss, or is it? Yeah, uh, it, it is embroidery, kind of borrowed, borrowed style yeah. stitching in the. I think I did four ply embroidery floss. Four ply embroidery floss, and just some uh, stitches in groups of two, four, six, eight, different lengths. Uh, just a you know nothing real. Uh, nothing planned. Exact, just yeah. stitched. And so then the, uh, you know, it's somewhat of a deconstructed look, but the garment is just made just like the London, um, buttons and all. So that may have been the 
Actually, this is the first one. Yeah. This is the first one? All right. Well, maybe we're doing this together, since you know this a little bit better than I do. <laughs> uh, so the base of this is also linen. And then the second layer of fabrics are kind of an ombre silk, kind of a silk file. And again, machine stitched down around the edges. And then some brown and burgundy floss. Now, there are some remnants of this variegated silk fabric over here on the table if somebody does want to do this kind of a yeah. technique. So this is the Chicago jacket. So these are basically the two patterns we're working with. The London shirt pattern has a very drop shoulder, uh, kind of oversized garment, has more, more of an A-line flare to it. The Chicago jacket, while not fitted, it is a little more um, peg in shape. So if you're considering making the Chicago jacket, you want to be sure that you have the right ease in the hip. And if you need to expand that, we can help you do that on your pattern work. Okay, and as far as patches, you might look at Samantha's jacket today because she has put crepe patches on an organza. And it's all just machine stitch, no handwork on that. This is fantastic. Yes. Um, but tell her what pattern it is. The Brando. The Brando jacket, which is amazing. Because the Brando jacket normally has a zipper and is asymmetric, but without the zipper and all that, it just folds into a nice uh, notched collar lapel garment. So yeah, that's No good. changes were made. Other no changes. changes. So you no zipper. right and the left. You didn't do Correct. two rights or something. No. Nope. Well, the Brando doesn't have a right or a left, I don't believe. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it right, work. the right and left are the same on the Brando. You may be thinking of, I don't know. No, I, I, I may have, I just forgot. Yeah, yeah, no, it is, but that is, so it's a, a, an organ, silk organza base, and what kind of crepe? I thought it was a silk kind of crepe. This is an expensive silk. It's and like that is a silk crepe, okay. is what that is. Uh, on top of it. It's like $200 for that piece of fabric. Yeah, right. But you know, okay, so she has $300 in the jacket. We're going to go to Santa Fe Weaving Gallery today. You won't find anything in there for $300. I don't think. So, okay. that is great. That is as good, for sure. Got it. So, okay. All right, so uh, what other applique ones do we have? Or we have the. No, you have, with this is kind of a mixture. There's applique on mm -hmm. here. So th this one I made, and I did a lot of, um, of this is a mix, pretty much. Not of the strip piecing, but of applique and reverse applique. So the base of this fabric uh, garment is linen, all of it. And then I layered silk organza, the same fabric that Samantha used in black, over that, stitched it, and cut away some of the organza to expose the, um, linen, and then I've done some silk dubioni on top of that. So there's two or three layers sometimes in uh, this garment, and then I took kimono pieces and cut them into little squares and applique them on top. My hand stitching is a little more random. Uh, I took a workshop with Claire Wellesley Smith, who is a fantastic, oh, I don't know, you know what to call her. She's an artist in Britain, and she does all hand stitching. I took a class with her at Chateau de Ma, and she loves circles. So I did a lot of hand stitch circles on this garment because I happen to like circles as well. So this is a London, but it's been lengthened. So you can do various things with the London. You could make it floor length if you want to, and make it a super elegant uh, piece. I've also lined this, so if anybody wants to know about lining or underlining, we can talk about that some, at some point during the week. All right, so then I have the Chicago on, which is a, just a simple technique of the out, of the out of the package pattern. And then I just took random pieces of kimono and just channel stitched them on here mm -hmm. with raw edges. I was going to wear um, one of the jackets today, but for the purpose of the recording that Alex is doing, one of the fabrics I'm going to talk about 
is the fabric that I have on with my pants. This is, I've talked about this before on, on the live streams, but I'm a little embarrassed to tell you that I have not really done a lot of dry cleaning or washing of these pants. They don't smell or anything, so they're still good, <laughs> I think. But at any rate, I have traveled with these pants to Europe, anywhere in the United States that I go. These are my go-to pants. I, I throw them in the suitcase, and they come out, and I put them on. They do not wrinkle. I've spilled things on them. They don't stain. I don't get it. It's the most wonderful fabric I've ever had for pants. And I feel very svelte in this fabric. So it's a polyester crepe. And Betsy's looking up to see how many colors we have. We have some new colors that just came in. I think we have maybe five or six, seven colors. But we're gonna have this fabric on sale for the next week. And I, I tell you, you've got to get some. We have gray and navy and black, perhaps. I think purple. Purple. I think we have red yes. and navy and blue. And a light magenta. At any rate, it'll be on the website, you know, in the category of what's on sale. So I wore these pants specifically to show the audience and you all uh, that everybody has to have a pair of these pants because they're, they're fantastic. So. Uh, this is the Picasso pants. Yeah. Well, we should tell what we have on too. Uh, I have on the Picasso pants, which are my go to pants. I love them, I wear them all the time. Uh, in various fabrics, various colors, whatever. I have on the, uh, let's see, I've on an ET with long sleeves, and then I have a, a Tremont jacket on with no sleeves, and I just put some facings on the arm side, so to make it best. So, uh, you have, what do you have on? You have on Picasso pants with your, I know what you're gonna say, but don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, with my Chicago. Chicago jacket. And then purchased. And the purchase shirt. shirt. And we have random jacket, but tell them what you did with with the your uh, swing tee. My swing tee is um, I have on a long sleeve swing tee, but I also put some gathers on the side to bring it up. So the ruching? Very, very cute. This is yes. the ruching queen, you know. And I do have two dresses I'm going to wear this week with the ruching, but you can see it there. And I'm wearing the plaza pants, and I put pockets on the plaza pants. So the plaza pants are a, they were the original one seam pants for us. And then people, I started making the plaza without the pleat in the front by simply taking my two pattern pieces and taping them together. But people didn't want to do that. That was way too much work. So we put together the Valencia pants, which do not have the pleat. So the Valencia pants are the plaza pants. So you can take your Valencia pants pattern and put pleats in them if you want to, but that's probably way too much work, so <laughs> whatever. And then we have had the urban pants, and they were the same. So at one point, we had three or four patterns. They were all based on the plaza pants. So, so if you fit one, you can just walk into the, the dress. Okay, so let's go to uh, reverse out and pay. Okay. Um, this is the first jacket that I made, reverse applique, in, with Kathy in her class in Topeka. And it is a linen on the bottom with a silk on the top. And I constructed the whole jacket with the stitching, and then I did the cutaways at the end. And part of the fascination or compulsiveness comes through, I feel like you, it can be very artistic when you start combining the fabric. For instance, I made, this one is my latest, and I call it my unfractured fractured. Uh, I didn't do any cutaways. We had a big debate at my house over what fabric to use, which this is the original burnout fabric. So it is gorgeous. And I backed it with this linen. And that changes the look. So if you use white, on the back. If you use gray on the back, you can see how it totally changes the look of that burnout. Or red on the back of that burnout. How what a striking. So we were going round and round with if I'm going to cut it out and have the linen peeking through, 
or the opposite, have the burnout peeking through. We couldn't decide. So I said, you know what? I'm just not going to cut it. <laughs> it's going to be my unfractured fractured. So we went that way. Um, this is another linen on linen. That was done for the Barbie, Barbie movie. The pink. This is another linen on linen, but I went crazy with the free motion sewing. You have to look at this with up close. Lots of machine stitching on it. This is where my machine was smoking. <laughs> um, and then I did this lovely jean. It's a different pattern than the others. It's the detour jacket. Um, but again, I went crazy with trying to come up with samples. I did a pink denim to start with, and it didn't fray very much. I didn't think it was very attractive. Then I turned the denim over. This is the same color. It just <coughs> cut away. That didn't work. So then I went to a blue denim on the green. Excuse me. My nose is running. I don't want to drip on live TV. <laughs> Um, so that's how this one turned out. And I did the Harlequin pattern, which about drove me crazy, but it was fun. So you can just get crazy with the different fabrics, uh, the combinations. Um, did I show this one? Yeah. White with the, blue, the green linen. I made this one for France because I felt like we needed something kind of France looking. Um, but it's more playing with the fabric. So I really would suggest in the beginning, oh yeah, I forgot that one. That's another one. That's a, it looks like a quilted fabric. So it already had all the lines on it. So just followed it and put the blue linen on the bottom. But it really is the fun of playing with the fabrics. Here's a silk with a linen that I played with. You can do use different kinds of threads. Um, this is with pink thread, the other one was with white thread, so you can see how it become an obsession. This little craziness comes out. Cool. Okay. Hand it to you and you do your... Well, mine are not as exquisite as Samantha's. Mine are a little more, uh, <laughs> a little more subtle, so, uh, but this, I think this is the first one I ever made, but you, you can see the lines in it better. So this is layered up. The two fabrics are layered, and then you take a ruler, a yardstick, and you start your chalking, um, chalking here. And I try to, when you do this, do some diagonal lines first. When you cut on the diagonal, it um, shreds or frays less. So you just start this, just lay that ruler on, make your lines. And then um, start kind of in the middle, pin your first diagonal line and start from there on the sewing machine. Samantha uses that K2000. I find just pinning works for me um, that I can keep it together. And then <clears throat> as you're, you can do your cutaways before you construct you can construct and then see how much you do want to cut away on it. I mean, some of it, like the back of this one, a lot of that is left, so there's not very much cut away on that. This is um, a wool and a linen on top, and that's the Chicago. People, oh, this was next. This is kind of a mixture of cutaway. I did add some hand stitching and embroidery floss just because it's black on black. That's black linen is the base, black silk on top. So it is very subtle. There's just a tiny bit of shading different in the black that'll show up on that. And then the one that really stands out is that black and this is black silk on a white wool. 
but um, you don't have to have the wool on the bottom. We have, you can do it in white linen and black linen. The, um, and so you see the silk really, really frayed on that one, which made it. Talk about the snap tape. Oh yeah. And so I did use snap tape on this one because sometimes you just don't feel like putting buttonholes on. So this was um, kind of the first idea to put snap tape on this. This is going to the different techniques on this. This is That's the right. stripping. You're probably ready to go into that. Yeah. So the, the base of this is brown crepe. The top is a knit that was a giraffe print that sat on the shelf for years. <laughs> Nobody wanted to wear a giraffe print, so I um, cut it in strips, one and a half inch strips, and then fused it down. The bottom is crepe, then you put a layer of fusible, the fusing up, and then slowly working from the bottom up, you'll uh, fuse your strips and go kind of in steps on this. But this, I thought was, the snap tape added a lot of a little more of a modern look to it. We have snap tape on the table in black and cream. Yeah, and if you don't want to do buttonholes, that's a perfect thing. <laughs> There's your yellow one down here. Is this something we can move, do you think? Yeah. And so after the giraffe, because I cut all those strips. So you kind of have to cut in steps. You cut 20, take a break, come back, cut another pile of 20. I thought, you know, there has to be a better way. This is crepe that I figured out tears beautifully. So I just mark, this one is done in different widths. There's a four inch, three inch, two inch, and layer down, but it's the same thing. The bottom is linen. I layered in, on this one I did use touch of gold and white, and then this is just layered up. What I like about this one is it's been um, sort of accented in red thread, red buttons, and red <coughs> serging that finishes the bottom. So that's an exposed serged hem and finish. Yeah, on, on all of them I did not turn them up. It's just a serged hem that I think works nicely. Let's see, one more. And then this one is just a mix of, we had some scarves that Linda and I bought in the sale. We were thinking of what to do with them, so we cut up the scarves, added some, cotton gauze to it in the solid. This is on white linen. It's stitched all in blue. The serger is blue. And we used snap tape for it. This is the kind of gauze that you used. Yeah, this tears beautifully. It's a cotton gauze. You don't think it's going to tear, but um, I think Nancy's going to do her whole garment in tear, tearing strips and putting it together. So that's going to be really fun to see. All right. Okay. And then, um, hold on a um, maybe the fabrics have been grabbed. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, Elaine Henry came to France and made this jacket. Did anybody buy this fabric and could hold it up? I did. Yeah. Yeah, that's Marcia Durst. Right. So this is yardage, and we have more of this. Maybe not on the table, but definitely we have more in various colors, various designs. And so she has used the motifs that are in this yardage. I've got too much in my hand. <laughs> you take that. I'll okay, you take that. All right. 
just taking advantage of the motifs that are in the fabric and cut them out and redesigned them on this linen garment. And I thought that was brilliant. And then she's done some hand stitching around some of the motifs. So sometimes when you don't feel like you have the creative oomph at some point, which is me most of the time, um, you know, go to a piece of fabric and it may be your inspiration. And you may end up with something totally different, but it, it's a starting point. And another, <clears throat> in taking like this jacket as a first example, what Linda just showed this cotton gauze. That could be your base fabric. We have this remnant of this beautiful ombre silk that could go as your patches on here, if you wanna do that. You can find a base, you can cut up a scarf and do beautiful patches also. Okay, have we done it? <laughs> I think so. I think so. Um, so, uh, for those who are watching this live stream, uh, there is a video and a, that we are calling it the Fractured Jacket Class, and that is going to be introduced for the first time tomorrow to everyone, and that will be on sale, right, Betsy, uh, for a week. I don't even know how much it is. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I guess we'll figure that out. Uh, but it does explain the processes of these three techniques in pretty good detail. Uh, also on sale is a group of various fabrics that we put together as good combinations, some linens, some silks, some prints, some solids, and also then all of the colors of the uh, polyester crepe for the pants, because you can't make a jacket without making the pants to go with them. So, um, is that it, Alex? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching, and uh, we will see you next week. All right, so now that you guys have seen the showcase, I'm gonna to present to you guys the sale. The sale this week is our Fractured Jacket Class sale, where you can purchase the Fractured Jacket Class, and then you're also gonna see different fabrics that we're featuring for the Fractured Jacket, as well as our favorite pants fabric that you saw Linda mention for the Picasso piece. So take a look at our sale this week. We hope you guys have a great time browsing. Feel free to pick up the Fractured Jacket Class. We have the Chicago Jacket on sale. We have the London Jacket on sale. You guys are getting the live experience here in Santa Fe. And definitely check out our upcoming events for Cleveland for our Fractured Jacket class in August in Kansas. And we'll see you guys next week for our next live stream. Thank you.